Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Darko. Darko is from Croatia, but he lives in England, in the UK. So let's see what Darko has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello Darko, how are you? I'm good, I'm very good, thank you. And, how, and yourself, how are you? Very well, thanks so much for taking the time today for the interview. Oh, thank you for, for having me. I'm really honored to, to be here. So tell me, how's your day going so far? Uh, well, it's been okay. Uh, I mean, it just, you know, uh, calm Saturday after a rather, uh, rather exhausting week at work. So, yeah, uh, basically I've, I've done the gym in the morning, walked my dogs and now just relaxing. Do you have like a routine that you do every weekend? Something that you do every weekend or not? Uh, well, I do. I mostly, you know, I mostly look after my dogs, go go to the longer walks, you know, the, uh, in the fields or in the woods or something. Uh, on Sundays, I usually play my music and have my rehearsals and, yeah, go to the gym. So, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So tell me, uh, where are you from, Darko? Uh, I'm from Croatia. I come from Croatia, uh, but I, I moved to the UK in 2019. Huh? Uh, before that, I lived about a year in Belgium, in Antwerp. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a globetrotter, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and why England? Why the UK? Uh, because my late husband was from here. Okay. Uh, no, we first... We lived together in Antwerp for about uh, six months. He came mm -hmm. to live with me after we met. And uh, then since uh, things haven't been going very well with my work there and uh, our landlord as well, so we decided to, to move here where I had more opportunities. And, of course, uh, he had a house here, so there was no rent or something. So, yeah. It was um, it was a logical uh, thing to do. I see. And where's about in Croatia you come from? Uh, I was born in Zagreb, uh, but I lived in uh, Zadar, which is a city on the coast. Uh, uh, it's a lovely little city, about uh, population about seventy thousand, and yeah, it's a historic <laughs> city. Uh, have you ever been to Croatia or? Actually, I never been to Croatia before. Actually, I used to work for uh, for Disney Cruise Line in Orlando a few years ago, and there were so many people from Croatia. I remember meeting so many people from there, but no, I never been to to Croatia before. Well, I I can recommend it. It's a beautiful country to visit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you you mentioned that you are a singer, yeah. So walk me through a little bit more about your career as a singer. Uh, well, I can't. We can't say it's a, it's much of a career because <laughs> it's it's mostly a it's mostly a hobby because uh, uh, I had a few just local bands you know with uh, kind of pub gigs and stuff like that and now I'm doing my solo uh, solo singing is it's just the same you know uh, local pub gigs nothing nothing special nothing big so we can't talk about <laughs> some kind of pop star career <laughs> definitely but you know it's a fun thing to do i i love doing it i see and so what do you do for work for a living uh i'm a boat builder a yacht builder oh wow interesting yeah, wow. It's, it's a lovely job it's a very it, it is a very demanding job but it's uh it's very dynamic it's mm, Every day it's something else, so it never gets boring. It's never it, 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 it's never a routine. You know how many you know jobs tend to be uh -huh. routine in the end. This this is this is not it. This is very very complex and very interesting. I see. So basically, you build the the yacht uh, from the scratch, literally from the scratch. From the, uh, the scratch. well, since these are pretty big yachts, they're about uh, about. 60 feet and more so there are many of us involved in the, so there's a whole process so uh, yeah i'm uh, i'm in charge of the decks so anything uh -huh. that you see on the deck that's that's my that's my responsibility amazing okay so during the interview i'm going to explore a little bit more about your life and also about your point of views okay 
Mm, yeah, 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 perfect. Darko, before we start our journey within the magic box, I would like you to tell me something interesting about yourself and maybe something that not many people know about you. Oh, huh. uh, something interesting about myself. Uh, I don't know. Well, I, I traveled a lot. I've, uh, I've met many European prime ministers and diplomats for, <laughs> for, for some reason. <laughs> wow. I mean, when I was, when I was young, just, uh, just fresh out of, of uh, high school and uh, my first year at college, I was uh, working in a, um, um, in a newspaper. I mean, it was, I'm not really proud of that because it was one of those, you know, very gossipy, very, you know, you know with the gutter press magazines. You know, where, uh, so since I, you know, at the time I was, you know, I had a mohawk and everything, I looked like a proper punk. Uh, so my editor, uh, for some reason, she loved to send me uh, to, you know, celebrity, uh, to, uh, to, to celebrity kind of events and, and whatnot, but also to politics and diplomacy and, <laughs> and stuff like that, because I was so out of the picture there, because, you know, all these diplomats are very formal and everything, and then I come with my mohawk there, so it was, it, it was really fun, so yeah, I met... I met a very a few very very influential influential wow. people there, and yeah, that was that, that was a fun part of my life, really. Wow, that's Didn't very last for long, but it was really fun. <laughs> wow, that's very interesting for sure. My goodness, wow! Imagine meeting all those people. That's amazing. Yeah, and, and you know, you know, on on this on these parties when they see you like that, you know, in the, in leather jacket with all the patches and mohawk. They tend to relax, and after mm -hmm. you know, after some of them have a little bit too, <laughs> a few glasses too much, so they reveal all kinds of things. You know, <laughs> it was it was really a laugh. <laughs> Amazing, Darko, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life? Absolutely, you... absolutely, bring it on. <laughs> Amazing, welcome to William in the magic box. Thank you. So I have him my best. Wonderful questions, okay? I'm just gonna play a song just for us to relax before the first question, all right? Yeah, yeah, all right. Let's do it. Right, so before we start the game, during the join, if it comes up a question that you don't wanna talk about, you don't answer, always can change, okay? Yep. First question for you is, what does happiness mean to you? Uh, what does, sorry? Happiness mean to you? Happiness, uh, well, fulfillment, love, mm, you know, finding a finding a soulmate, maybe you know, uh, enjoying just being with someone. Do you believe that happiness is a choice? A choice. Hmm. That's an interesting question. Well. Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's a choice because, you know, we all have our, uh, we all have our troubles in our lives, you know, and, uh, some people just have, you know, are, uh, just live very unhappy life, lives for none of their fault, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not really a choice. I see. Tell me, when have you been the most happy? When have I been the most happy? Uh, well, in the in the period of my life from, let's say, late 2018 till uh, just about beginning of last year. So that was the part of my life when I lived with Rob, my late partner. Unfortunately, he passed away last year from from cancer and but you know those few years that we had um just a little under five years were really indeed the happiest <laughs> happiest years of my life wow and he he was from your country or he was english uh he was english he was english he was from here oh that's the reason why uh, the one you mentioned that too, you came to the uk that's yes, why yes, yes i see okay cool it's actually uh, i remember when when yugoslavia started this 
I mean, I still consider myself a Yugoslav, <laughs> which, mm -hmm. which might, you know, insult many people, but I don't care. Uh, you know, when uh, Yugoslavia started falling apart, um, I knew at that time I was just, what, 13 years old. Uh, I knew that one day I was going to have to to move somewhere else, you know, and uh, and actually Britain was my first choice always because I was always, you know, inspired by by British culture and uh, I grew up on British music, wow. on, on British comedy, so uh, wow. uh, I kind of, already since then I knew that one day I was going to end up in Britain and uh, it was just coincidence that I met Rob and we <laughs> kind of clicked together from the first moment. And um, here I am. <laughs> and how did you did your path cross, if you can share? Uh, well, we met online, uh, which is uh -huh. not really romantic, but uh, you know, on on, uh, on Facebook, I think it was some of our mutual friends posted something funny, and he commented something funny. Then I commented, I responded to his comment with something funny, and then we started chatting. In a messenger, and wow. within, within the first few messages, we just realized that we were uh, very much, very, very much soulmates. And then, within eight weeks, we started living together. <laughs> it's all oh my one of those really magic stories that I never thought it would happen because uh, I don't really, I never really believed, you know, in those online romances or whatnot. But then it happened to me, so. <laughs> Absolutely, it can happen. Never know, you know. It those can happen. It can happen to anyone. Yeah. I think when meant to be, it just happened. It's sometimes not expected. It happens when when it, when you least expect it. Yeah. I mean, at that time, I was uh, I was going through some really tough times uh, there, and I I wasn't even thinking of of, of of a relationship or anything. I wasn't even on one of these apps or, or the dating apps or whatnot. Uh, I deleted all my profiles there and just wanted to be alone for some time. And then he just came to my life. So it was really, really strange, but, you know, very fulfilling, very, very happy story, really. Oh, beautiful, beautiful story, for sure. Next question. Let's do it. Hey, Darko, next question is, what's the biggest difference between you and your best friends? Huh. Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. I don't know really how to. <laughs> there are many differences, <laughs> uh, uh, but maybe now since all my friends are from are, are are British here, so those differences are pretty much cultural differences. You know, because mm -hmm. obviously come from the different from a different culture, and on many things in life, I have very different point of views. Uh, and um, I'm sometimes very, you know, very, very open about things, sometimes maybe even too open, which, <laughs> which you know, how English tend to be uptight some, sometimes. Uh, it, that that kind, of, kind of always shocks them, you know, but, you know, it's, that's what makes, makes me interesting to them. You know? <laughs> and the biggest similarity, what that will be? Uh, biggest similarity. Hmm. Hmm. Um, well, when we when we scrape off all these cultural differences, we're really not, not that different. We have a similar similar background, similar growing up, all you know, mm -hmm. kind of blue collar uh, blue collar guys. Uh, we face similar difficulties in our lives. We similar experiences you know good or bad mm -hmm. so yeah we're not really that different <laughs> i see okay next question let's do it okay dad could before the next question tell me how music came into your life how it started your passion your talent about music uh, well, I'm always since I was a little kid, I, I I loved music. You know, my mom and dad always had many records, so I always play those records. And uh, uh, when I was uh, uh, when I started when I started primary school, uh, mm -hmm. I was six year old, years old. Uh, my mom uh, uh, bought uh, for me and my brother uh, a Beatles a Beatles cassette. 
you know, one of those uh, compilations, it was uh, the blue one when they're all on the balcony, you know. <laughs> uh, so I didn't even, uh, I couldn't speak English at the time, you know, but uh, I was I was fascinated by the Beatles. And actually, you know, I love, with, with the Beatles, I learned my first English words and <laughs> you know, slowly started, started uh, learning English. Uh, so, yeah, I was always drawn to to rock music obviously and that was the influence yeah. of uh, of my mom because you know she uh she was that you know baby boomer hippie generation and you know when she was in, in college she was just crazy about the beatles and rolling stones oh. and zeppelin and all that jazz you know <laughs> so uh so yeah it was it, it was mainly her influence and then you know after after years i when i was a kid i first started playing the guitar a, a little bit and then Starting to uh, listen to more heavier music, and you know, then I got into punk and new wave and uh, even even metal, and uh, you know, so yeah, it it just kind of evolved there. Uh, then years later, I started DJing. I did that for, for about twenty years. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so yeah, wow. And uh, growing up, and uh, you know, right now, which person in your family um, you've been more cl close with, more connected with? Um, well, with both mom and dad, but I would say mom because of of, of the music, because we had this kind of understanding, uh, similar, let's say, similar taste in music. So, um, yeah, I was a little bit more connected to to uh, to my mom, but only slightly. You know, I was mm -hmm. it, it was pretty much equal between mom and dad. You know, both of them had. Um, their own and, and their own different kind of influences on me right okay and they are both back in in croatia right now they're in croatia yeah, yeah. Let's see. okay next question for you is which book had a big influence on you uh, hmm. uh, uh, those were i loved I loved Guy de Maupassant. He was a French, French mm -hmm. writer in the uh, uh, realist there in the uh, 19th century. I loved his work, especially his uh, fantastic novels. And uh, uh, yeah, he was a great influence because uh, there was there was a certain darkness about him, about his stories, uh, and uh, especially the way he describes uh, the lower classes the the uh, the grim life of you know <laughs> uh, of the almost underworld shall we say you know uh -huh. it's something that really resonated with me especially growing up in a, in a war-torn war -war country so i was always kind of drawn drawn to that more more kind of a uh, darkness and macabre, <laughs> as well as literature, as well as, as in music. So, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So, it was a lot of things involved at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And when you think about your childhood memories, what's the best memory that comes to your mind? Uh, my childhood memories. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. It would it would probably be the summers that we spent in our 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 summer house that we had, uh, yeah, and or you know the also the summers that we spent uh, with our relatives in the in a village. Uh, so there were farmers, you know, and uh, to me it was always it was always kind of it was always very relaxing, you know, to come from the big city, you know, and just live with, uh, you know, cows and sheep and, <laughs> and dogs and all the animals and chicken and everything. You know, this was brilliant. I really loved that. And do you get to, to visit back home sometimes or not? Sorry? Do you go to visit your family sometimes? Uh, back yeah, yeah, occasionally. Usually, you know, around Christmas or New Year. Mm. See. Ready for another question? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Next one. You like dancing as well, Darko? Uh, yeah, I'm not that good of a dancer, but you know, I try, I try. 
because I'm very tall, you know, and then, you know, my my arms and legs just go around and, you know, I yeah. have to think about health and safety of other people. So, you know. <laughs> Next question is, when was the last time that you cried and why? Mm. Uh, well, mm, hmm. uh, it was, <laughs> it was actually just today <laughs> when I was uh reading some of uh, some of rob's poems you know so, uh he wrote a lot of poems he was very good with with writing so oh. mm. do you cry easily uh, dark or not just it depends uh, that's something i learned to accept about me you know uh <laughs> and not be ashamed of because you know um uh, Especially we as men, you know, are always taught, you know, that boys don't cry. You're always, all your life, you're just uh, taught to hide your emotions, to bottle it all up. Uh, yeah. Until, you know, until you burst. And that's not healthy, you know, wow. so. Uh, uh, and actually, you know, living with Rob, uh, he taught me, you know, that if I need to cry, that, you know, it's okay to cry. You know, and men, okay. men should cry more, you know, because, <laughs> you know. It is healthy to lose, to to to, to let these emotions, uh, let all these emotions out, because then then um, then you can uh, you can take control of them. You can you you can really face your fears. You can really face your your traumas and uh, not just hide it away and pretend. Oh, I'm a I'm an alpha male. I don't cry. Uh, well, yes, you do, you know, <laughs> and you should. You know, I totally agree with you. I think crying it's a uh, it's a way for you to to be stronger you know what i mean it's it is, a way of knowing how strong you can be is we we definitely agree on that <laughs> absolutely and it's a relief as well if you're more um you know more relaxed you you can you can think straight you know you can oh, it's absolutely absolutely you can express yourself and i i do agree with you i think with being raised in a way that's you shouldn't cry you don't show emotions and i think it's totally the opposite i think we should be able to do that more often and you're going to feel much better for sure when you when you think about yourself when you analyze yourself what's the biggest joy of being darko what do you like the most about being you um well i think uh, i think it's i think it's my sense of humor <laughs> i would say that you know and uh, uh willing to learn willing to learn all kinds of things you know from from languages to instruments to you know just go and travel and learn about new places and you know, just uh, kind of sponging in knowledge you know <laughs> that's what i like the most see okay next question let's do it hey darko next question needs who do you count the most for help most for help hmm. hmm well i have a few friends that i'm really you know that i can always count on you know whenever whatever happens and uh, um, i'm really blessed you know to have to have these people in my life you know, mm -hmm. you know and some of them i will <laughs> there's this one friend that uh, I actually never met in real life you know we, we were just friends on Facebook for now more than 10 years but uh, since uh, since we started chatting you know uh, I've always uh, considered this guy one of one of my dearest friends really because you know we, we just just understands me on, on a certain level and uh, yeah it's a really wonderful friendship with someone i i've literally never met you know in 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 person we only met online because he lives across the across the atlantic ocean so oh wow uh, yeah but you know yeah. such friendships are really really nice to to nurture and to to keep you know it's, <laughs> it's, it's just a lovely feeling you know having someone you can really trust and rely on Absolutely. When I was checking your profile, uh, Dark, I could see um, some pictures with uh, you with a lovely man with uh, some tattoos in his face. That's uh, one of your that friends. Was, that, that was Rob. That was oh, Rob. That yeah. was Rob. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I, I didn't know how recent was that pictures, and I could see the connection there. Like looking the pictures, I could see you know those 
bonds. I didn't know the story, but for me, I could already say and feel that was someone very special for you. Oh, when yeah. I saw the, the picture, I was like, okay, that's um, so I, I, when you said that, you know, I said, okay, maybe it could be a new friend or someone that he's seeing now. So now I understand the, the connection there in the pictures. Very interesting. Amazing. Yeah, that was good. Three questions left. Let's do it. Hey, next question for you is, which talent do you wish you had? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, maybe, maybe painting or, or drawing in general, because I'm I'm really bad at it. I'm horrible. <laughs> I cannot draw a straight line. <laughs> so, I, I, I would like that. <laughs> Tell me something, uh, Darko. What's the meaning of life for you? Ooh, oh, we're getting very deep <laughs> here. Um, well, you know, hmm. I don't know. Uh, just find your happiness, I guess. That's the meaning, you know. Just do in do whatever it takes you know to find your peace in life to your peace with the world and um i don't know maybe to leave a legacy i don't know it sounds a bit it sounds a bit grand but you know at least influence people at least those who are close to you you know to just to remember you that's that's it you know do you believe in destiny um hmm. i'm not sure do i believe or not because you know when i when i when i look back on my life uh, uh and the way especially you know that pivotal moment in my life when i met rob uh, yes it was almost almost like a destiny you know but mm -hmm. since i was never religious and uh, only i was only for a while kind of slightly spiritual let's say mm -hmm. uh it's a little bit of a gray area for me <laughs> yeah i understand i think you know through our lives we try to find our way your understanding you know spirituality there are so many things in the world that sometimes we try to connect to try to understand and it, it, it's just a journey i would say yeah, it's a journey yeah, yeah. Cool. two questions left <laughs> <laughs> let's do it are you okay to talk about rob yeah yeah absolutely yeah? Yeah. So tell me, um, of course, I'm sure you have a lot of memories, a lot, you have a lot of, you know, um, memories in your life together that, you know, it's, uh, it's visible there. It's, it's there forever through pictures, through memories. Yeah. But tell me, um, at, like um, a situation, a moment that uh, for you, when you think about him, that always um, come close to your heart and you feel like great about it. Uh, well, I think it was... Uh... Uh, our first uh, and last uh, proper holiday when we went to Wales two years ago. That was really something beautiful, and uh, it was a beautiful place when we where we rented a, this cottage in the middle of nowhere in the, oh, wow. in the woods, and it was absolutely fantastic. The scenery was just magical, and um, yeah, uh, that and uh, when we went. Uh, to Croatia. I'm really mm -hmm. glad I took him to Croatia. Uh, that was, well, that was uh, both sad and happy story because uh, we had to leave our flat in Antwerp uh, so suddenly and uh, plus uh, I had to leave my apartment back in Croatia that I rented at the same time mm -hmm. where uh, my friend lived and uh, uh took care of my dogs uh but uh you know some things happened that i really don't want to discuss here but i had to leave that, that that apartment as well and um uh it all happened within few days so uh we decided when we were in belgium where we were gonna buy a van there and just go drive to croatia all the way to zadar 
pick everything that I own uh, and just go back to Antwerp and then to then to England pick, pick stuff from Antwerp and then off uh, to the ferry and uh, to England which was you know uh, those uh, and we spent about 10 days in Croatia in Zadar so yeah I, I introduced him to some of my friends there and he loved it and that was wow. really mm, as well as it was a tough moment and painful for both of us uh and it was also enjoyable because we had fun you know he saw my hometown he uh, uh he's met my friends you know and uh, that's where uh, when our relationship actually grew stronger of course so, um, yeah that's that's that, that whole journey was uh really 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 experience of a lifetime <laughs> wow actually when you're when you're saying about you know the the journey going to Uh, you know, get a van, go the way to Croatia, come to England. I'm just thinking, my God, imagine, even though it was a challenge, you know, situation, imagine the memory is going to be both of you in a van just traveling, you know, around. And I think those, those, yeah, yeah. those that joy... drive, especially from Croatia back. I mean, I, it, it was a 17 hours drive from, 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 uh, from Zadar to Antwerp. And I did it in just one go, you know, we just, wow. we just stopped uh, halfway for, you know, lunch and to take the dogs for a walk and everything. Oh yeah, and the dogs were absolutely delighted by Rob, you know, from the, from the first moment <laughs> they saw him, you know, they, they both came into his lap and, you know, they accepted him, you know, as, oh. as their new daddy. <laughs> oh, sweet, very sweet. I think whatever Rob is right now, he's just smiling, just seeing you sharing these memories. I, I have no doubt, for sure. Yeah. I have goosebumps here. Look, you're saying I've got goosebumps <laughs> and that's it's beautiful. Next question is, if someone offered to tell your future, would you accept it or not? And why? No, no, no. no I tell me why. Uh, because, you know, future is... Future can be changed, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is, you know... Uh, you know, as as Captain Jean Luc Picard once says, you know, past uh, is done, but the future we make at present. So, future can always be changed. So, yeah, it's pointless to look into the future <laughs> to me. Amazing. Cool. What's your star sign astrology, Darko? Uh, it's a Gemini. I was born in uh, in June. Gemini. Okay. Ready for the last question? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it, last one. Let's do it. But before the last question, you know, through your your career or through your, um, let's say, joy of singing, of performing, tell me a situation that you're never going to forget. It's always going to have a special place in your heart. Oh. Just performing? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> that would be... <laughs> Uh, back in Croatia, when uh, a friend and I had this kind of band uh, that we just kind of made, you know, it, it was just a pop-up band. You know, we didn't have we didn't have songs. It was more improvisation. You know, we we did some electronic backing tracks, and everything else was just pure improvisation. And um, uh, so uh, he he was uh, playing the guitar. I was on the electronics, and uh, we had two of our uh, two girls that that were vocalists okay. uh, together with me, um, and uh, we had a drummer. So that was the band. Uh, but then, in, uh, during our during our show in in one of the clubs where we where we performed, uh, I was singing, and I just looked back and suddenly found out that we had a bassist you know a guy who just joined us that that <laughs> evening and just came onto the stage plugged his bass in and, <laughs> and he did it really well you know because because he knew the drummer and everything they were friends from from earlier <laughs> so that band kind of just grew that night you know <laughs> and, and, and then we ended up with you know five, eight people in the band so yeah that was really memorable you know and uh wow uh none of the none of the songs you know existed before that night it was all improvisation and then oh. and then few few months uh, later uh we did we stopped performing as that band because it was just you know one off 
uh, we heard about the guy who was some kind of a, a, a local fool kind of thing. <laughs> that goes around and you know places his stickers around the city but the only band that he listens to was our band <laughs> he was our biggest fan you know <laughs> so, <laughs> it was just oh, come on <laughs> we were just joking <laughs> that's funny oh yeah. okay that would be one of the most memorable ones last question for you is tell us about your first kiss and your first love Ooh. That was so long ago. It was really so long ago. Uh, uh, hmm. Now you got me thinking. <laughs> well, yeah, my f well, that was my first. My first kiss was actually with a girl. Yeah, uh -huh. you know. Uh, I wasn't always gay. I mean, I was always gay, you know, but at least, you know, <laughs> in my teenage years, I pretended I wasn't, you know, so I had this girlfriend. You know? <laughs> it lasted for about two weeks, so it didn't, <laughs> didn't really end well. But yeah, she was my first kiss, you know. <laughs> and she was the first love as well or not? Uh, well, I I did kind of like her, you know. She was she was really nice and, you know, I, I felt good, you know, with her, but... Uh, uh then it was her actually who broke my heart yeah so <laughs> <laughs> and to which later i thought well good riddance because i'm gay really <laughs> i think she thought i think at the time she was like okay there's something wrong here there's something could be probably that, probably yeah, yeah. let, probably let me something see. was off maybe so she, yeah she lost interest <laughs> maybe she said okay let me follow my intuition well we were you know we were just what we were, we were 15 so of yeah. course of course just we were just the yeah. fickle teenagers so yeah it's it's not surprising you know? and for you growing up as a gay boy did, it was difficult for you back in croatia did you have the support of your family it was difficult i know my family didn't know uh, so it was uh like i said uh, when yugoslavia started falling apart uh all the former uh, Yugoslav republics, uh, all the governments uh, suddenly turned uh, very hard right, and uh, it was also a very religious right. So uh, the whole country, the whole society uh, went really, really more conservative. So at that point, uh, point I knew that, that that's why I knew I, I will at one point have to have to move because I knew I was gay. I knew I, I am not gonna. I'm gonna try try to convert myself to of course gay because it's impossible so i knew that if i wanna that i can e e either stay there and live a lie or just go out and go abroad and uh, and live who i truly am but then at the age of uh, 17 so it was still the 90s it was still very you know the, this wave of conservatism in croatia uh i came out First to my friends at school, so basically, all of my school friends knew. Everybody knew uh, except my family. <laughs> my, only my family didn't know. My brother knew, obviously, because you know we always uh, told uh, everything to each other, so he knew everything. Basically. But parents, no, they they didn't know. They actually found out only when I start living with Rob. <laughs> Would you believe? Wow! Do you so think do you think they knew somehow? Somehow they felt well, that they, was... they knew because you know when I was uh, at about age of thirty five, uh, my dad just kind of stopped asking me when I was going to get married. So then I wow. knew that they are aware of it. You know, I mean they're not stupid. You know, so. <laughs> It's so interesting. Actually, it happened to me as well. But not I was older. I was maybe twenty. I was already living in Portugal on my own, and I remember calling back in Brazil. I'm from Brazil, and I was calling back at my dad's sometime, and he was like, "Oh, how's the girls there? Are you gonna get married?" This kind of thing. After one year, he literally stopped it. He stopped yeah, it, yeah, as yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, now when I look back now." I think somehow he realized as well that they realized. Uh, of course, they always they, they know always, they know very well. Only you know, uh, <laughs> but it happened. I came to them. I came out to them uh, officially when, when Rob and I decided to to leave Belgium and to move to UK. 
Now, uh, they knew I had a roommate in Antwerp. I see. You know, a, a British guy who is my roommate. So, uh, but then, you know, when we decided to move, I had to tell my parents, you know, that I'm suddenly changing a country again, you know, from Belgium to UK. So I called my mom and said, look, uh, things haven't been going well with my work here. And uh, I'm moving to England uh, with Rob. Uh, who is not really my roommate, you know, we are together. <laughs> there, was, there was like five seconds silence for her to process it. <laughs> and then she just kind of skipped over that, info that information and just went on. Okay, when are you going? Are you coming home? Are you, you know, how are you going <laughs> to, where are you going to live? How are you going to, do you have a job there? You know, so all these, you know, formal questions. So n nothing about Rob, nothing, complete silence, you know, because <laughs> she's a bit like that, you know, uh, uh, kind of, uh, she has this philosophy of least said soon as men do, you know, <laughs> all the generations usually have. So, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, but, you know, they accepted it and they accepted it. And later when, when Rob got ill, you know, and at one point, you know, um, uh, I was speaking to my mom on the phone and Rob was lying down next to me on the, and his bed uh, just before he passed away. Uh, it was actually two days before two days before he passed away uh and you know she said one thing you know uh, give my regards to rob because because after oh. all he's family you know and, and that meant a lot to me and wow and it meant the world to him you know <laughs> wow beautiful so, yeah. beautiful okay it's not the end yet let's play now the word association game okay i'm going to give away some words just tell one word that comes to your mind quick thinking okay Yes. One word for money. Uh, necessary evil. Okay. Family. Mm, peace. Fear. Uh, teacher. Hmm. Love. Everything. Life. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Joy, let's say joy. Okay. Sex. Uh, sport. <laughs> <laughs> Religion. Uh, irrelevant. Okay. Friendship. Um, mm, I would say mm, richness. Hmm. Health. <laughs> okay, politics. Uh, necessary evil. <laughs> <laughs> Desire. <laughs> Desire. 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 Hmm. Double edged sword. Wow. Regret. Mm, sometimes. Okay, success. Uh, Arbitrary. Wish. Hmm. Hope. Happiness. Love. One word for England. Home. One word for Croatia. Back home. <laughs> <laughs> One word for DJing. Uh, youth. One word for music. Everything. Singer, one word. Um, joy. And the last one now, if you could define Rob in one word, what it would be? Soulmate. Oh, beautiful. Let's pretend now we're going to meet your best friend for a coffee and I'm going to ask your best friend. Define Darko in one positive word and one negative word only. What your best friend would say? Um, I don't know. In, hmm. I don't know. In positive... I don't know what would he say. <laughs> Maybe... Uplifting. Oh, I hope so. I hope. 
<laughs> negative. Yeah, negative. Hmm. Chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's play now Darko in the magic box and you can ask me a question. But before you ask me the question, I believe in Croatia, the, the, the language there is called Croatian or not? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. So what's your favorite Croatian word? Um, well, it would have to be shishmish. It means a bat. <laughs> <laughs> a bat. Shishmish. Shishmish, yes. Shishmish. Amazing. It's a bat. <laughs> okay, you can ask me a question now, Darko. Uh, well, uh, let's say if you had a magical power to bring any fictional character to life, which fictional character would it be? <laughs> oh my god, what a beautiful question, what a beautiful question. You know what? The first one that came to my mind straight away for some reason is the Superman. <gasps> oh my god, for <laughs> some reason I think I would love to have the Superman around, <laughs> take me for a ride in the space or something. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, you know, the Superman old movies, you know, when yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I, there was something about it. it somehow brings me to my childhood memories. I yeah. remember growing up watching some cartoons and some, you know, on TV. And for some reason, the Superman, I think that I think because he was flying everywhere, he could yeah. be anywhere. I think that's why I always got connected with him. Yeah, yeah. He was good looking as well, of course, still. <laughs> <laughs> but this beautiful man with glasses when he wore just a regular man before, you know, turning into the Superman. I just was fascinated for those two men that, you know, he literally could just turn around and become this powerful man and he was flying everywhere. So, yeah, I think I think the Superman, I think, would be a good character for me to bring to real life and have a ride with him around. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> great question, great question. Did you enjoy the interview, Darko? Yeah, it was really it was really fun. It was lovely. Yeah, I loved every minute of it. <laughs> Thank oh, you, really. Thank you. Thanks for, for being so kind. And again, um, it, I'll tell you, it was so beautiful to hear you talking about Rob, about your memories, you know. I think those situations in life, sometimes we don't understand. Sometimes for us it's hard. I'm sure for you, you can tell it's not easy. At the same time as well, you know, through the interview, when you were talking about him, I could I could feel your love and your passion. And uh, of course, a bit of sadness as well. But at the same time, the great memory is going to be always there. And I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think the memories, you know, I could see your eyes shining, talking about your journey all the way to Croatia and bring him, you know, back to, to England again. And again, um, Darko, those memories, it's, it's just, I think life is about memories, you know. Okay. I know sometimes, uh, you know, those situations happened and we don't, we don't know how to deal with it. But however, you made memories and I think that's going to always uh, comfort your heart and always comfort you as well. So thanks for being so open and talking about it. And um, it's beautiful to see someone standing here and sharing memories. I think it's it's amazing to see. So thanks again for being so open and accepting my interview. So okay. <laughs> Before you go, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by. Uh, anything that I live by. Well, it would again have to be that would again have to be one of the quotes of, of the great Captain Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek, you now gather that I'm a bit of a tracker, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, uh, that it is possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. It's not a wow. weakness, it's life. Beautiful. Yeah, so that's one of the, one of the best, <laughs> one of his best quotes, you know, <laughs> so Beautiful. down to earth, so realistic, you know, and uh, Basically, what it means, what it, what it means to me is, uh, don't you know, don't regret, don't bang your head uh, against the wall if you if you lose something or, or or if something bad happens. Yes, it's possible that you've done nothing wrong, but it still happens. So it's just mm -hmm. have to accept that life sometimes gives you lemons, you know, and it's yeah. just that you know and. Uh, but in some other situation, it will, it will be better, you know, because life is all about balance, ups and downs, you know, after you had misfortune, at one point you will have fortune. You know? 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's 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 um, it's so true what you just said. Now, it's going to be always like that, and not going to be forever. You know, it's always going to be up and down. You know, you just need to navigate through it. That's what makes that's what makes a ride interesting. You know, just like a yeah. coaster, it will be it, 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 it will be so dull if it, if it will be just straight line. You know, it has to go so, up yeah. and down. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, we keep in touch. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Okay, thanks for the interview. Yeah, thanks. Thank again. you very much. Thank you very much, and it's have a day. lovely day. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. 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 So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.